guest today is Phil Japixi. Phil, how you doing? I'm doing good, Dave. Good to see you again. Yeah, I know. It's been a while. It's been a while. Do you remember the time that I mispronounced your name on this show? Uh, how many times? A lot. Oh, only on one episode. <laughs> yeah, I do remember. It was like 10 years ago. I think we recorded it was in at your least house, 10 didn't years we? Ago. I think it was a code match. Was it? We have recorded it in my house, but that was, uh, that was after I, uh, I had taken some lessons and I had learned how to <laughs> say Japixi. What well, much better. What do you do? What do I do? Yeah, for a living. Um, I do. I actually got multiple jobs, right? Yeah. So I uh, run a consulting company. Mm-hmm. I'm the director of consulting on the Microsoft side of the house. I'm also the chief architect, but I also am a book author and speaker and uh, mentor. And then your free time? What free time? <laughs> Occasionally I get out on a boat. Oh, going, that's but I, got, I got three kids who are teenagers, so that takes up all my free time. Awesome. And we're here at VS Live Chicago, and you're, you're, what are you speaking on here? So I gave a full day workshop on .NET Corp, building a, mm-hmm. it was a hands-on lab on Sunday, building a, uh, a full application using EF Core and ASP.NET Core. And mm-hmm. then I've got a talk on Scrum tomorrow, and then I gotta think, uh, JavaScript, and then another talk on ASP.NET Core. Oh, you are busy, holy cow. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you were telling me something about .NET Core that I wasn't really familiar with. There's some, there's some uh, I'll call them issues, or maybe misunderstandings about I think misunderstandings the support way of it. cycle. The Am support life cycle. Support life cycle, right. yeah. yeah. Tell me about that, because I, w- I really wasn't aware of these issues. Yeah, so there's a big change with .NET Core as how support works. So typically, historically, like full .NET framework. Well, .NET framework, I'm not supposed to say full. 4.8 is the current version, right? Okay. So you'd figure that 4.8 is better than 4.7. Makes sense. So it's going to last longer. I would think so. And they're going to continue maintaining 4.8 for a period of time. And it's typically around 10 years is Microsoft. You say history. maintaining. You mean fixing bugs and bugs security taking, patches. Yeah. Maybe taking support requests. Um, I, I don't know about that side of the house. Okay. You have to talk to a support specialist. Right. But yeah, I'm sure that if money changes hands, they'll take support requests. Okay. From .NET Core, they've changed. A lot of the internet uses what's called the LTS lifecycle. Okay. And it's long-term support and short-term support. Okay, that would so be STS, long, I guess. STS. Well, Microsoft calls it current. I've been taking lessons. things a little differently. So we've got LTS and current oh, yeah, in, we have in our the own .NET. Yeah. Yeah. In the .NET Core world, .NET Core world, easy for me to say, it's LTS and current. Okay. And LTS is long-term support, and it's guaranteed for one year after the next GA release or next LTS release or three years, whichever is longer. So for example, when 1.0 came out, the very first version, .NET Core 1.0, it was declared LTS. LTS. So long-term support. So it will be supported bug, and this isn't like call, get support. This is bug bug fixes, security, security, things like that for three years or one year after the next LTS release, whichever is longer. Okay, that's interesting. That doesn't seem very long to me. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm used three to, years isn't I, that long. I'm used to 10 years of support right. being the default for things like Windows and Office and things like that. Yeah, so, so three years is pretty much the max you can get out of it. All right. Now, typically, the LTS, or long-term support version, is the major version. So you think 1.0, 2.0, 3.0 is the long-term support. Okay. And then the dot releases are current. You know, they're intermediate releases. Uh, they'll be, so, they'll be, and a current release is only around for three months after the next release. Now, to put a wrinkle in it, when 1.1 was released, it was declared LTS as well. So both mm-hmm. 1.0 and 1.1 were LTS. Okay. 2.0 came out, it was declared current. Hmm. When 2.1 came out, it was declared LTS. So 2.1, which is still in support and will be supported to, I believe, 2021. Okay, that's three still years around, from one right? it 2.0 was already dead, right? They're not supporting it anymore. 2.2 came out, and a lot of people, and I had this, this is why I want to talk about this, because there's some confusion about this. I had an entire group of, of 10 people in my workshop all work for the same company. Mm-hmm. When I informed them that 2.2 goes out of support and will no longer be patched after... 23 December of this year, they freaked out a little bit, right? Because they had gone to 2.2 thinking it's greater than 2.1. But numerically got, it is. They got production <laughs> code running in 2.2. Okay. And 2.2 is current. So it's three months after the next release. And what 3. we say 0, next release was 3.0? The next release was 3.0. Okay. Came out 23rd of September. So three months from then, right? September, October, November, December. 2.2 goes out of support. 
Hmm. And not like XP out of support where you throw some money at them, you can still get support. They're not doing anything with it. And that's by design. But the rule is 2.1. 2.1, they're keeping around. Okay. Uh, what's the? Do you know the reasoning for this? It's confusing. Well, how I mean, many I, how many versions of something can you support? No, I, I totally get having uh, limited support for some things, but it seems like the, that it's out of order. Um, I see that there's a, also that there's an incentive to upgrade from 2.0 to 2.1. Right. Clearly, uh, I, I'm guessing that the folks that built that framework, they're, they had more confidence in version 2.1 they did on 2.0. Well, so I they think wanted I, people on that version get the that's the that's the good bits. Right. That's my. Well, there was also speaking. some features in two point one that were not in two point oh. Oh yeah, well, and I think some the, in two point two that were well, two one as well. Yeah, not not as many. Okay. The big one in two point one that I think, my opinion, I'm not speaking for Microsoft or yeah, neither or am I. I should else. clarify that. Um, I think that two point one became LTS because it had GDPR support. Oh, okay. The general data protection regulation and coming out of the that's EU. That's an important thing. That and that was built in, enhanced in HTTPS, and, and a lot of things that are like, hey, this is better. Yeah. Right? You really need this. Yeah. The world is a better place if we're thinking about security. Right. Absolutely. And then 2.2 came out, announced as a current release or a mm -hmm. short-term support. But unless you're like me and writing books and have to keep current on this stuff, people don't know about it. Uh, I didn't know about it. Yeah. I, I work for the company. Right. <laughs> so 3.0 just came out. Uh, I don't know when this is get posted, but but last week in in real time and probably a, a month or so. In, okay, well, just to in clarify, podcast we're time. in uh, the middle of October right now. Yeah, uh, October ten or something like that. Yeah, so the twenty third <laughs> of September, three point got launched. Okay, but it was launched as a current release. So when it was launched, Microsoft said, or technically the .NET Core team said. This will only be good for three months after 3.1 gets launched. Okay. 3.1 is scheduled to launch 5 of November. Okay. 3.1 will be the long-term support release. So we will have two releases that are supported, 3.1 and 2.1. So what's your advice to people that are currently running their app, building applications on 2.2? Um, they could roll back. They could roll they back. They could keep this thing that's not going to be passed or supported. Right. Or they could upgrade. Yeah. What's, what is your... What's well, your advice? so that's a really hard. Let me let me be the architect. What, it then, depends. Uh, right? It always depends. What's the criteria for making that decision? So, so here here's a. We only have 15, 20 minutes on this, so <laughs> I'll, let me keep it short. One of the big changes in 3.0 is that it no longer supports interacting with the full framework, the .NET framework. Oh right. So 2.1, 2.2. Also, I can run ASP.NET Core on top of the full framework. Uh, so if you've got those dependencies. So if you've got on dependencies the, on the old framework. Yeah, and we're then, not supposed to say full framework, just the .NET framework. Yeah, but the, the, um, if you got those now, now that's legacy stuff. Yes. And now you need to, you need to, so then what? You should probably roll so, back to so 2.1. So if you're on 2.2, the only there's only one significant feature that came out in 2.2 in my mind, and that's uh, IIS in-process hosting. Okay. Uh, and that's a performance thing. Okay. Um, and if you absolutely have to have that, you're, you're moving to 3.0. Okay. The problem with moving to 3.0 is if you have any other dependencies, uh, you've got corporate NuGet packages, you've got frameworks that you're using, right. you're going to have to update some those to .NET Standard 2.0. Oh, okay. Right, so now you've got other changes you have to make. Uh, I see. So the problem is solvable, but it may not be a simple It's solvable. Solve so if you've got, like, the, the, the folks that were in my, my workshop on Sunday, they're like, we have all these things we depend on. Right. I said, so you have to roll back, right? Because unless you can get everything done in, in now a month to get it fixed or two months, um, then you're going to be out of support. Now, little green men aren't going to come onto your computer and uninstall the bits. <laughs> right. Right, but if there is but a security flaw or something like that, then you're like stuck that, with it. Then you're stuck with it. Well, is it is rolling back? Is that a, a big challenge? Is it just a matter of changing a setting in my project properties, or is there more to it than that? Um, it depends on how many things that a two two you you used. Most people that I've talked to in the field were using two two because they didn't know two two was not the long term thing, mm -hmm. or they made the conscious decision because they wanted in process hosting. Right. Um, if that's the only change you made, it literally is a project file change and there's a couple other settings but it's a pretty minor thing to roll back okay. moving forward to three of there's a lot of breaking changes i see they're good changes right. i mean they were due right um and most of the breaking changes are in ef core mm. okay and, and a lot of new features in, in asp.net core three um c sharp eight but again if you're using c sharp eight you can't be using dotnet standard 2.0 
you can't use any full framework, you're all in. So if, if this was a brand new project that you did, and you did 2-2, two, because two, uh -huh. that's what came up in the template, then move to 3. It, oh, if you're in isolation, so right? There's a lot so, of people that didn't even realize what they were using. They just, yeah, said, they file, just said file, file a new, new project, project and, and Visual it? Studio defaulted to 2.2 two yeah, instead of 2.1. Uh, so uh, the solution that I always use is I make the change, I change the version of .NET that I'm using, and then I see what breaks. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's my strategy. <laughs> yeah, and actually there's, there's a pretty good, the docs are wonderful for .NET Core. So if this is a even for things like core. this, even for migrating between versions. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is you want to look for the uh, migrate from two one to two two, uh -huh. and reverse it. Uh, well, say that again. Reverse it. So if you need to go back to two one, there uh -huh. is a, a there is a, a post on Microsoft Docs docs.asp.net that tells you how to go from two one to two two. Okay. So just go there and do everything backwards. Just start at the bottom, read up. Yeah, <laughs> okay. pretty much. Uh, but it shouldn't be that much work. Moving to three is a much bigger deal. Got if it. you've got the time and you don't have the other dependencies, I would go to three. Uh, so maybe a short-term solution would be to roll back. And roll back until you can get everything else. Is start, start migrating. And there are fundamental changes in three, so you also have to take testing into account. Uh -huh. Right? Because if I'm just going to slam it into three because I have a small window to do it, are you going to get all the testing in it? It depends on your app, right? right. If it's brochureware, if it's a very simple, if it's a conference website, okay. who cares, right? Yeah, if, it, it if, is good if to it's know a financial what? thing, then maybe you want to roll back and sure, think yeah, about if it. If it's a high risk uh, uh, line of business application, yeah. absolutely. Uh, it, it does help to know where the friction is. Where am I going to run into problems potentially? And uh, the, it's usually best to tackle the easier things first. Yes. Uh, are you still blogging? No. Okay. I don't but blog. you're speaking, though. I, I'm speaking a lot. Yeah, where are you speaking next? Um, next, I will be in uh, St. Louis for a day, and then I'll be in Winnipeg for the rest of that week. Ah, is that and the then, Prairie DevCon? Um, it's uh, Deliver. Deliver. So oh, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the Agile side of it. Okay. And then um, I'm actually home for a couple of weeks. I'm doing a lot in VSI of Orlando. I've got a two-day workshop and like four talks, and then um, I'll be teaching some classes in Jersey and California. And then spare time. And in spare time, I'll be uh, <laughs> watching my kids' sporting events. <laughs> Excellent. Phil, thanks a lot for taking yeah. time for this. Thanks for having me on. Most of my best friends that I have met, I've met through technology and speaking at conferences. <laughs>